Hello everyone. Today's question is something that I've been wondering for maybe just a few days and I don't know, maybe it's something that's interesting to explore, maybe it doesn't even matter. But it's something that, and I certainly don't mean to open a can of worms by this, but it's something that's interested me a little bit. Well, obviously I'm a white American male and um, is when I was a child, that's who inhabited pretty much all of the known governor positions, all of the senatorial positions. There were some women in Congress. There were some African Americans in Congress. But not like there is now. And that started when I was in grade school. Uh, some women and minority racial men were being elected mayors of cities. And congressmen and, and I think that's great you know I, that, that's how it should be they're Americans too um, but sometimes especially this past year when we had a president elect who eventually has become our president Barack Obama there were a handful of people who were saying that those who were not voting for Obama are racist which is certainly not true. I mean, it's not as simple as that. There's plenty of other government or political leading reasons why you vote for one person or another. So I wonder if uh, the shoe has gotten on the other foot now, that if a door opens wide enough on one side of the spectrum, does it close on another? I don't know. I, I don't know, but that's what I'm wondering. Because, case in point, uh, Barack Obama's election to president opened up a senatorial seat. Well, then Governor of Illinois, Rod Blagojevich, of course we know that worked out in a scandal, but in any case, it was up to him to appoint a successor. He was definitely the governor at that time. He chose Roland Burris. Roland Burris had a lot of government experience. I think he's 71 years old. He's got a lot of government experience. And uh, as far, you may quarrel with certain people's politics for one reason or another, but he certainly has had government experience. He certainly could have that job, and no doubt he could do it. You know, if how he would vote according to how you feel might vary, but he certainly has enough experience for the job. So Roland Burris was Blagojevich's choice. Blagojevich is then eventually impeached and ousted and replaced by Pat Quinn. Pat Quinn is calling for the resignation of Burris, mostly because he feels that Burris was put in there for tainted circumstances since Blagojevich turned out to be corrupt. However, he does not have to resign. He can hold that seat until it becomes up for re-election. And if he gets re-elected, he gets it another six years. But that's how that's how our system works. That's, that's the way it is. So, now, Hillary Clinton's appointment of Secretary of State made New York Governor David Patterson have to choose. David Patterson, by the way, is an African American, for those who don't know, and he's blind. So he's got a physical challenge as well as being a racial minority. Um, but he, the job to find a successor befell him. He chose a woman who, who I know nothing about other than uh, he chose, she was a, she was a state assembly woman, I think. Don't hold me to that. I think that was her job. So now, is Governor Patterson obligated to choose a woman to replace a woman? Is Governor Blagojevich or later Governor Quinn obligated to choose an African American to replace Obama? If they were to choose Assemblyman John Miller, are they, you know, can they not pick a Caucasian man for that position? Is that possibly sexist or racist if they do that? That's that's what I wonder. I, I, I'm interested in the input. I, I don't know the answer to that. For hypothetical reasons, if Arlen Specter is elected or appointed to the cabinet, that would befall Ed Rundell to choose a successor. 
Specter and Rondell both practice Judaism. So, is Rondell disloyal to his uh, faith if he chooses a Christian to fill that seat? Or, or a agnostic? I'm just wondering. Or does he have to find another Jewish politician who has enough experience to convince the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania he should be in the Senate or could be the next senator? But then again, when it comes to an election, you don't have to have experience. You just have to have a message, and the voters have to believe you have that message. How long you've been in government really doesn't matter. Jesse Ventura had... A little he had no government experience at all when he was elected mayor, and when he and he had only a mayor, one term of mayoral experience when he ran for governor. So, but the voters believed in him and they voted for him, and that's all that really matters. All right, I'm just wondering. Thank you.